Hello everybody and welcome back to the fourth episode of our FTV Skies Expert Mode playthrough. Today guys, I've actually made a plan up of what I want to do and I think we should be able to get it all done today. So today, while we still want to go ahead and get ourselves the iron ingot, which is down here. So today we're going to progress through all of Ars Magica, well, Ars Nouveau, this section right here. But I also want to start delving into a few other magic mods. One of those is Hexerai. Now we already have the Hexerai mixing cauldrons. I filled this one up with blood in preparation, and I've gone ahead and made another one because I might need the blood for crafting itself. As you see here, I've pinned quite a few things of stuff I want to go ahead and do. Oh, that's a barrel for the next time. I filled this barrel up here with a bunch of stuff of what we're going to actually have to use today. So I went ahead and made a bunch more gold, which we did in the last episode. So I've made a bunch of gold. I went ahead and crafted up some more obsidian because today we also want to go and see if we can get to the nether because it should be as simple as making a portal. The quest is up here, right? And you need to do this quest to do the amethyst shard to like complete the chapter one. So this is up here and I really want to go do this actually so we're gonna go ahead and make another portal later on first thing we want to do is we definitely want to get our blazing archwood sapling so that is up here in the super cooler which needs cognitum and if you remember cognitum you get from when you make your blood sigil however it is only if you have leftover fluid i realized this so the liquid biomass if you when you make your blood sigil you need to actually have 2,000 buckets or more of biomass to get some cognitum so we had to actually make a second blood sigil. It's in our chest somewhere over here. Yeah, so we had to make a se second blood sigil, as you see our other ones in here, so we can get ourselves a bucket of cognitum. No big deal. However, we did that. And then we also had to get ourselves some red dime, which wasn't too hard. It's just beets in a crafting table. And then we also got ourselves a mystical light blue petal. Now you can get any type of petal. Personally, I, it was the first one that came up. But if you do floral fertilizer, it is just bone meal in any four colors of dye. We have plenty of dye, whether that be white, black, or whatever. So just over here, we've gone ahead and expanded our farm so that we can grow a bunch of crops i gotta harvest this eventually and yeah we've just been putting the stuff in here and because i needed to do floral fertilizer over here now over here i've gone ahead and expanded our island i spent <laughs> another a, a couple couple more hours building so yeah you know i've just expanded this out i didn't i ran out of gray concrete so i couldn't do the walls up anymore we had a bunch of white concrete left over actually so this wasn't too bad i only had to make i think two more stacks and then cobblestone well we have infinite cobblestone now because well we go over here i think we have like almost ten thousand left still how much do we have oh no we have 11.9 so yeah this thing's been running for a while our lava tank here is full these guys are full the fluid hoppers are full so this is full we need to make some more tanks later on that is currently not our number one priority though we can put all of our xp away and go ahead and make our archwood sapling which is the super cooler correct so we'll just go over here use the super cooler real quick wait oh there we go just like that perfect and this guy is done and it gave us two blazing archwood saplings which is perfect so we have some bone meal in our inventory already i've set up a dirt area over here i didn't actually need to i have dirt back there our star bungles already moved in so that's perfect let's go ahead and grow this guy oh i love i love ours nouveau like it's one of my favorite mods just because the original ours magica is so nostalgic and then perfect we got a plenty more saplings and if we turn in the quest we'll get one of each which we will grow one of each just so we have have them all ahead of time so now that we have plenty of archwood logs we can actually go ahead and make our imbuement chamber which i didn't pin but it should just be this recipe here right yeah perfect so that gave us four imbuement chambers which will unlock a very cool quest here so they give you a mob farm box in this barrel i can't actually see it however if we take our schematic cannon and our schematic paper right here and grab ourselves some gunpowder and then with this mob farm in a box we can actually set up a mob farm over here to continuously farm as mobs now I've set up the chunk boundaries here just so I can hopefully get this all in one chunk. I'm not entirely sure if I can or not. The pack has loaded us a bunch of preset mob farms. So I should be able to. So if we go into the schematic table here, I should be able to just scroll down to get the mob farm and put the schematic and quill in there. It'll load and perfect. Now we have schematic. So let's see how big this guy is. 
I wonder if I can fit it all inside this chunk. It looks like I'll be able to just fit it inside the chunk. So we're going to go ahead and take this away slightly. Take you here. You like that. So you always have to put the barrel beside the mob permanent box. And by the way, it uses gray concrete, which really made me excited as soon as I saw that. So it uses gray concrete, some dreadful dirt to spawn the mobs, obviously. Vector plates, train trap doors, black concrete tiles. So it uses all the perfect building blocks that we're already using. And then some darkened glass and so on and so forth. Really, really cool. So yeah, like I said, you just make the schematic in here. Then you can go ahead and place it down like so. Once you place on your mob arm with the schematic, once you've loaded it and place it down and figure out where you want it to go, you come over here to your schematic cannon, throw your schematic in, as well as some gunpowder, and you click lay. This guy does work. I killed one skeleton. It's not the fastest, as you see, mob farming. No, it's not in mob farming. It is monster hunter here. So yeah, I've gone ahead and killed one skeleton, but that's it. Nothing else came out of this thing. I got a force stick from, or force craft stick from the thing. But yeah, so the schematic cannon works great. Empty schematic, and we got uh, just a random barrel here now. We can go ahead and collect all this up. Don't need it anymore. All right, so the next thing in our quest list here is to make source gems, and source gems are really easy. So all you need to make source gems is some lapis inside of a imbuement chamber, and we just made our imbuement chambers. However, where you want to automate them right away, and the best way to automate them easily early game is to make puller and pusher upgrades which are probably the easiest method I know of to automate these guys here. But if you have a better suggestion, let me know in the comments down below. Now we have our puller upgrade. We can also make a pusher upgrade. And now we have two... Oh, we need one more oak drawer because I used the wrong one. Anyways, so yeah, now that we have a pull and push upgrade, we can actually just automate source entirely, which is actually really nice. And since we're going to have a vitalic source link here at our mob arm eventually, we're going to set this up decently close. And I actually wouldn't mind just doing it right here. It's not like it's a big deal where this is as long as we can access it in the future. But yeah, so if you just do drawer on top of a bubin chamber and then drawer right here and you do a puller upgrade, not inside of it, but in here, and then you just right click and you want to do direction up and then if you do a pusher upgrade in this guy here in direction down and you lock both of them so you have to make sure to lock this one because otherwise your lapis will just automatically be pulled right out and if we do that the lapis will automatically be pulled in and then once this is done you take the source gem out manually the first one only and you place it in this barrel so it locks to that and then now all of your lapis will be turned into source gems automatically or amethysts depending on what you use. And that is such such a simple way to automate early game source gem production. So I highly recommend you go ahead and do that. We're gonna grab ourselves a bunch more lapis and just fill that guy up. And that will make lapis for a long, long time or sorry, source gems for a long, long time. So yeah, here, as you see, our first source gem is actually done. So we're going to go ahead and grab it out and we'll stick it inside of our barrel. And now this is locked to source gems. That's locked to lapis. And this guy will make 46 more source gems automatically without any intervention. That is the easiest and the most minimalist way to set this up early game. And you can expand this for every single different essence later on in the game. So once you get air essence, you can do barrel, imbuement chamber barrel, and then have on the back, you have your virtual pedestals on the back. We'll show you that once we get there, I believe elements essence are actually coming up. So yeah, here you basically just need an imbuement chamber with, oh, actually the essences are really easy in this pack. Interesting. Oh, but for the conjuration essence, for example, you will need a book, a wilderness horn, and a starbuncle shard. Those don't get consumed, which is really nice. But yeah, you'll just stick those on the back on pedestals all the way up and you space them one block apart so recipes don't get intertwined. And it's super, super easy to automate these guys. And I really enjoyed this method. So the next thing our quest actually wants us to do is make a vital source link and we have all the stuff to make it and that's why we needed two source gems so that's why i waited over here and we can go ahead and make ourselves our vitalic source link which will produce us source from killing mobs and now that that's why we set up our mob farm earlier so we're gonna go ahead and make ourselves a vitalic source link like so like so and then we also, I forgot to pin this, but we also need a source jar to actually collect it. Jar. There we go. So yeah, I and mean, that's some archwood slabs. So we'll grab some archwood, make some slabs, and make ourselves... You know what? Eight source jars can't hurt. So the next thing here is actually placing down our vitalic source link. And I believe this can realistically go anywhere. I kind of want it central, so I'll probably go here. Actually, I might go underneath. You know what? I'll just go there for now. This will be in perfect range. And then we can go ahead and place some source jars down. And then we'll place one over here. 
that we will link over eventually. So we got ourselves a Dominion one from the quest, which is actually really nice. And the next thing it wants us to do is make some enchanting apparatus in Arcane Core, or sorry, a single enchanting apparatus in Arcane Cores. However, we don't have the amount of source gems just quite yet to do that. So we'll give this a guy a second and we'll let it make it up. All right, so we can go ahead and make ourselves our first bit of Arcane Stone, or sorry, Source Stone. And that will allow us to make a single Arcane Core, as well as an enchanting apparatus, which uses the crystallized amber we got from our last quest last time and we made three of them however we only need the one and you only ever need one enchanting apparatus fingers crossed <laughs> you might need more later down the line as in for a different quest but i doubt it however to make iron we need rot flesh which means we will need a zombie because i don't think we've gotten any rotten flesh however we should be able to put spider eyes in the example i saw it redstone oh no it's redstone okay well we can do redstone for now just to hand it the quest we will do it you know what the center of here it actually works really nicely so we'll grab our arcane core arcane core always has to go on the bottom block enchanting apparatus on top and we should be able to just throw in the redstone wait sorry i didn't read that right oh it's a sword stone so we do need a pedestal so we need to make ourselves a pedestal i thought it was just one to one but that wouldn't make too much sense now, would it? So we do actually need a bit more source stone, which luckily we're cooking up a bunch of stone at the moment. And I think a better way to do it is actually using our fans. That would just speed up the process a lot more. However, I'm just, you know, not willing to turn on our fan machines at the moment for no apparent reason other than just to make some stone. So I'm just using cobble for now, which no, it's not a big deal. So yeah, we're going to grab our arcane pedestals right over here place all four down grab ourselves a source gem redstone up here oh we have another goat spawning i wonder did that notice no it didn't damn <laughs> i was going to say oh it did look at that <laughs> it did pick it up so yeah we're gonna go ahead and turn that off oh by the way <laughs> oh that's a big boy uh i don't like this thing at all <laughs> it is very gross <laughs> i feel like it's gonna kill me <laughs> Hmm. There we go. <laughs> I don't like that guy, I'm gonna be honest. Gave us some cave centipede legs. Oh, Enderman can spawn in here. That's not ideal. That means we also need to get ourselves an Ender Inhibitor. Inhibitor. Which is... Not in this pack? Oh, no it is. Okay. Can I make myself one? Oh, Water Crystals and Mana Steel. That's not, not great. However, that will be enough source for sure, because it's a 10,000, you can hold 10,000 source per jar, I believe, and 10% would be 1,000, so yeah. That'll be enough source, we can go ahead and make ourselves our first. You know what, we should have done the iron, oh no, it's zombie flesh, we couldn't have, but yeah, so we got ourselves our gold catalyst. Hey, we finally got ourselves a zombie, I've been here for about, an, I don't know, like 10 minutes, maybe 15 minutes, looking for a zombie, but we finally got one, so luckily we got rotten flesh off of that, otherwise that would be very disappointing now we can finally go ahead and make ourselves our first iron ingots which i said i wanted to do in episode one that was very ambitious to say the least but i finally 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 am able to do it this back and now we have our iron catalyst so remember gravel in a heated remember it's heated blaze burner gets us primitive slurry we'll take that out grab our bucket throw that back in bucket over here primitive slurry iron catalyst just like so slurry gravel that and just repeat the process until you've filled up your machine and we actually might need ourselves some more peat in here yeah we will because we're almost out of power will that finish should finish there we go finally our first iron ingots now that's taken a lot longer than i expected it to initially but that is partially because we've detoured and made a giant base instead and also i wasn't optimizing it too well but we'll take this leftover enriched peat go throw it in here and we'll cook up all the iron that we've gotten so far while our iron is over there in our super cooker i want to go ahead and start working on some hex rye and get ourselves a willow broom now first thing we have to actually get done is turn this redstone root which is just made by shearing grass with the well, bone mealing and then shearing grass and then some redstone and then using this guy in a spirit fire to get mandrake root so we're gonna go toss it in our spirit fire over here like so we should be able to grow this willow sapling if it wants to take bone meal there we go it was taking a while are these vines? Oh, that's might be useful. I'm going to shear these. I should have a shear somewhere in here left over. I don't think I used it all. Yeah, there we go. 
I will shear these vines. I'm not sure if they will come in handy, but it can't hurt to have them necessarily. And we've got a bunch of willow leaves as well. But yeah, we can go ahead, chop down this tree. All right, so now that we have our willow logs, we can come over here to our mixing cauldron and make ourselves a broom. What did we miss on the recipe? Oh, one willow log as well as a mandrake root. No, it was not a mandrake root. Is it two wheat? Oh, it's two wheat. So we need to actually go harvest some wheat. I did plant seeds over here. I just haven't harvested them yet. Yeah, it should just be right here. Perfect. Oh, that was a lot of quests. Wow. We'll accept all of our quests before we go into the nether just to empty out everything while we're at it. Awesome. So now we actually got our willow broom and this guy is really fun. It'll allow basic flight and there is a really cool animation. There's little leaf particles coming out of it and you just can fly around as much as you want. It's not the fastest. However, it is very, very useful and left shift is dismount. So be careful of that because if you're trying to descend, the normal hotkey for it is left shift. I've rebound it to right shift. You can rebound it to anything. However, don't get them completely confused because you will accidentally fall off. And especially if you're in a void dimension, you will be in the bad spot. So yeah, we got ourselves a broom. And if you look, oh, sorry, I want to get off of it. If you look inside, the broom brush actually has durability. So that is something you have to be aware of. And I want to make some golden rings because I've never actually made a broom before. So I want to see what the golden rings actually do. It says it's a broom attachment. And if you shift right click, you can open the thing. I don't actually know what the golden rings do. I th it might just be a visual thing. And if it is, hey, why not? We can flex that we have more gold than we need, which we don't actually. We shouldn't be wasting gold, but I am for some reason. And then we also want to make ourselves a wet broom brush, which will need another bucket of water. We can shift right click that recipe in, which is the mugworts and the yellow dock release we got earlier. Some more magic roots. You know, we get a wet broom brush and that will bring over to our drying racks and we'll let that guy dry. It doesn't tell you how long it takes or like Wayla doesn't show you how long it'll take. However, it will tell you in the JU in JEI. I just went ahead and made a second flint and steel. I couldn't find the other one. And that's why we need to really get ourselves a storage system as soon as possible. And that is also on the docket for today, hopefully. That's why I have the bookworm charms pinned up here. And if you've never used bookworm charms, we'll go through it once I get there. However, there are Ars Magica's simple storage network, which uses storage lecterns and bookworms to access local inventories. They fly around, bring it in. It has a terminal similar to AE2's craft terminal so it's very easy to get used to i will hopefully get that set up this episode not entirely sure because there is one thing that requires emeralds to make and i'm not sure if we'll be able to get emeralds from the nether today so that is the caveat so if we're able to get some emeralds we'll get a storage system up if we can't get emeralds we'll have to wait till next episode or further down the line and see what we can do then however without further ado we can actually finally get ourselves into the nether which will allow us quick and easy travel now i just don't know where i want to put my portal um, i guess we can go put it over in a magic area up here also there's just random leaves up in the air so yeah i guess we'll just go over here i made 18 obsidian just in case i'm not too sure if you need a three by three or not however i want to be on the safe side some portals are like some packs are weird no okay i'm not sure if you need a three by three you might be able to work with a two by two however that's done and so this will be the enter the nether quest and that gives us a floating exoplane too so uh, luckily we're in a basalt del deltas i don't think we're going to get any villagers in here however as you see in the quest book here once you have flight you'll be able to explore the floating nether villages and while this is the best way of getting flight combined with another item in crafting the broom chain i'm not entirely sure what the broom chain does but we have ourselves flight and we can go explore the nether so if i find myself a village i will bring you back once i'm there okay there is a little something loading up in the distance here i think this is one of the bosses from abyssal craft actually <laughs> yeah it's another monstrosity <laughs> Now, I don't plan on fighting this thing right now, <laughs> but man, does this boss music ever slap. It is some of the best boss music out of any mod by far, and it's not particularly close. 
I don't think I really want to get down there and try to collect any of the redstone blocks that his thing could provide. <laughs> but it's good to know we finally found a structure in the uh, nether. Okay, I finally see something on my map up ahead. However, I have seemingly been confused. These aren't villages in the sense that they have villagers. They are villages in the sense that they have piglins. Finally, we have found one. They come with plenty of netherrack too. Oh, and ancient debris. Oh my goodness. We've lucked out. Here, let me get out F5. Probably not the best mode to be in for this guy here. I'm hoping I can just... Oh my goodness. Wait a minute. Wait, that loot is insane. Holy cow. Wait, I was not expecting this. Okay, we got crystallized mineral. We got a ghostly beast spawn, an ender chest, spell damage, netherite ingots, and an air crystal? Excuse me? It has a barrel here too. Wait a minute. Oh my gosh, there's so much. An experience of beast spawn egg, splash potions, netherite jewels, a combustion chamber from tetra, a spring line shard, 20% source char, excuse me? Oh, did my broom break? No, it's not. But I'm going to replace it while I'm here. There we go. Just while I'm out and about, may as well replace it. I'm hopefully going to stay on my broom the entire time I'm here, but there is so much to loot here. This is decently far away from our portal, which is way up here. And these are a bunch of nodes I found along the way. I did, I started going this way, and then I found another netherite monstrosity. So I said, okay, I'm going to turn back and go away from this. And I just caught a glimpse of the portal while I was trying to map up the cube like this here. So I finally, I just caught a glimpse of this, but this guy is insane. Oh, I angry the penguins. That's not great. So let me come down here and collect some more goodies. Oh, he's, he's seen me. Not great. Hello, Mr. Piglin. I am just here to grab some of your resources. Don't mind me. A yellow force furnace, a netherite chest plate, netherite ingots. Oh my gosh, there's so much. Oh, we can't really empty our heart bar easily. Don't mind me. An ethereal cir uh, circlet, immune to suffocation and elytra crash damage. Oh my gosh, there is so much goodies here. Hello, Mr. Strider. <laughs> Speed core, invar coins, water crystals. Oh, there's so much here. I can't even contain it all. Do you know what? I'm gonna go boop, boop, boop. Throw my netherite armor on. I'll grab all of this. Oh, I even I even have a light. That is insane. Experience core. Ooh, and iron. Okay, we're definitely gonna have to come back here. We're gonna spend a long time looting this place. However, like I said, I was totally mistaken. This is not what I thought it would be. There are no villagers here. However, I went into the FTB Discord, which I'll leave a link to down below, which they're very, there's a lot of very, very helpful people in there. If you go into the FTB Discord, you can get a lot of help very fast from a lot of different people. I found out that there are both nether villages and regular villages. The regular villages are in the overworld, so we can take our broom and fly around the overworld and get ourselves some villagers that way. But yeah, there's hundreds of different loot chests here. Oh, that was a blaze, wasn't it? Okay, we don't like the blaze. So we're going to pop home and we'll come back here and slowly loot away at our orchard, at our piglin village thing in the sky here. And we'll see how much loot we get in the end. Earlier in the nether, we got ourselves two ender chests. So what I wanted did is I made a few hoppers. Now, I think this is definitely overkill, but I don't know how much loot is actually in that nether village. So instead of having to make trips back and forth, back and forth, back and forth emptying out my inventory and as we can't quite yet make a backpack as it requires ersatz leather which is industrial hemp which we actually have we can probably get this yeah it's just hemp yeah we don't really have the means to get honeycombs right now without making a beehive and harvesting them so that's something for the future so what i did is i made a backpack on the go <laughs> which is just the ender chest in a simple funnel system to funnel down everything into this chest down here. I'll take the broom out since that's not part of it. However, this is everything we've collected so far, minus the bowls as well and the flint and steel. <laughs> okay, now that's everything we've collected and we're going to go ahead and loot the entirety of the nether fortress and this is chunk loaded so we won't have to worry. If you look in the map and go to claim chunks, I've force loaded this entire area. I force loaded most of my base. 
I can just force load the rest there. I don't know why I didn't. However, this entire area is force loaded. You can do that just by clicking the M key, selecting your base. So hold down left click, it'll select an area. And then if you do shift plus left click, it will force load the area. And then right click to unclaim. So anyways, this is force loaded. We don't have to worry about this. This will continuously be loaded and sucking out the items. Wow, now that was a looting session. I found a lot of good things in the nether, and I believe this is the first chest with stuff in it. Yep, this will be the first chest with stuff in it, so let's just take a look at our entire haul. So we got ourselves some netherite ingots. Very good. I mined some netherrack myself just so I could have it to sift later on. So we got experience, bee spawn eggs, netherite leggings, which we sh might be able to convert back into netherite. Yeah, maybe not actually. Nevertheless, we have netherite ingots, or sorry, netherite armor for days. We got these Wither Skeleton Tweaks Blades. I've never seen these before, but they have a decent amount of attack damage on this guy here. Like 16.5 is pretty good. A uh, 16.75 even better. Wow, we might actually use this in our farming station later on. So we got a bunch of Tetra gear as well. An ethereal circlet. I did already put one on. No, I haven't. I'll stick that one on. So that's that chest. A bit of splash potions. A glowing beast spawn egg. So that's glowstone. A yellow force furnace. I think this requires force to be used. Anyways, so that's that chest done. There's nothing else really. There's some bit of apotheosis gear, some gems, and some other stuff from Tetra. We'll get into that eventually, maybe. We'll see. In here, we got a chipped anvil I just picked up off the ground, some more apotheosis gear, and an Ars Nouveau amplifier gear. Now this chest, this has a bunch of goodies in it. So we got some add-ons from Industrial Foregoing, and these are going to be... Actually, no, the recipe is the same, but yeah, they give some pretty good, like, that's just insane loot. An Inferno Containment Cube. Now, I didn't want to open this. I think it's just a shulker box, but I wanted to save opening in it to see if there's anything... Ah, dang it. I really thought there'd be something in there. That's sad. Anyways, we'll stick that back up there. We got Vampiric Force Mitts from Forcecraft. I wonder, I assume that just goes in your offhand. We got more glowing bees, a bunch of these ethereal circlets, plenty, plenty of those. Arcane essences, so stuff from Apotheosis for gear enchanting, which is actually going to be really useful. We got a crystallized amber and a bunch of gems. We got an efficiency four. Wow, these are some good, good soul axes, actually. We might be able to strip the enchantments. And we also got an Ars Nouveau crossbow. Oh, some really cool stuff. And a bunch of sparks from Cyclic as well. And I mined some Shroom Lights because I think we'll need them for other recipes down in the future. In here, we just got some villager blocks I picked up off the ground. And then in here, can we convert this into diamonds? I don't think we can. No, we can't. Anyways, we got ourselves a diamond chest plate, a bunch of apotheosis gems, sprinkling shards. These are really, really good because these require ugly, ugly elements craft. I really don't like this mod. However, it's in the pack, so we will use it eventually. But yeah, they give us sprinkling shards, so that's actually really nice. Some more gems, a speed core. I'm not entirely sure what that does. Two 20% full source jars. Pretty amazing. 11 netherite. 11 netherite. That's actually... And then some food. Part of the diamond. I'm not sure what this will actually be used for. Yeah, it's just the pickering. Oh, it turns into diamond bee. That's very useful. Wow, that's... Wow, wow, wow. That's actually really useful. And then some crystals from Elemental Craft as well. And Splash Potions, a Glyph of the Fall we, you saw in the clips. We got two of the Glyphs, I don't remember which ones. And then Experience Bee and Amethyst Bee. So yeah, we got a bunch of good loot. Oh, and some blocks of Crystallized Mineral as well. And then these insane boots, by the way, look at this. Feather Folly 9, Soul Speed 7. Like, these boots are insane, by the way. We're gonna throw these on. I'm not, I'm not faster by any means, but it's still insane. And we'll bring this with us. And we're going to go find, since I'm on a whole journey right now, we will worry about storage systems next episode. I promise that'll be the first thing we do, because apparently we got to get all this stuff stored away somehow. So we're going to get a nice big storage system set up for next episode. However, before I end off this episode, I really want to go find a village in the sky in the overworld so that I can have emeralds for the next episode when we need them to make the storage system. So, once we find one, we'll be right back in just a moment. Oh, wow. Okay, we came across a Sky Village decently fast in... Wow, this is... I just have to appreciate this. This is beautiful. Oh, I thought our broom broke for a second. Just a bit of rendering lag. And there are plenty of emeralds. You know, I said I was worried about getting emeralds for, for the villagers. Well, there are... Well, let me say, well, let's just say plenty of emeralds here. And also, is this made out of white stone? Or uh, white rock? Yeah. We're gonna 
destroy this entire village, I'm going to be honest. <laughs> wow. Okay, we're going to sit here and explore for a while and see what we can find. Well, I'm going to call it there. I'm going to say that marks the completion of our ransacking of all the villages around. I will probably spend many, many hours flying around looking for new villages to ransack just in case there's small loot tables we haven't hit quite hit yet. However, I think we've found the generalized loot pool of the villages. I might go find one or two more in the overworld and maybe one or two more in the nether if we can find them. We'll see what we do on the episode. However, next time I definitely, definitely want to get into a proper storage system with Artist Nouveau. We'll get that set up and we'll work towards getting chapter 2 unlocked and getting out of this silly age of having no resources and no storage. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, remember leave a like down below. Leave me a comment if there was something you learned today or if there was something you wanted me to do in the next episode. And also, if you want to catch the next episode or anything else I put out, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Thanks guys. Bye bye.